Hi, it's Bernie Goback on the weekend of the 6th and 7th of October with weekend news you can use from American Ireland. You're watching me on YouTube.com or you've been listening on audioboo.fm stroke top cold. I'm an American, I'm in Ireland, I'm looking at the frieze and other pieces of artwork carried in the Financial Times weekend edition. I like the frieze, I've never been there. Something we've got to do, maybe with a logo, a QR code logo that points back to the creative multimedia course that I teach in uh, LIT, Limerick Institute Technology. This um, creative code is from UBS. It's all part of the magazine section and the FT this week. There's other stuff in here that I think is worth looking at, like looking for the next big one. There's an article that's written by April Dubosky about this author. That would be David Corman. He's tracked breaking uh, diseases that break out. Joe Gard, if you're watching this. If you're interested in viruses from animal hosts that have been tracked in different parts of the world, Diseases that jump from animals to humans. Spillover documents that animal infections are the next human pandemic. Published in the UK, Spillover charts the development and spread of the world's deadliest viruses in a literary crescendo that starts with little-known horse virus in Australia and builds through frightening waves of Ebola and SARS and peaks with HIV. Contagion. It's a soundtrack that's in my, uh, my iPod. I uh, think it's part of the soundtrack of my life because, you know, viruses, we're all, we've all survived them. Quayman's I uh, spent six years researching the book all over the map, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Uganda, Netherlands, New York State, looking for an animal host of disease and how they jumped. Plenty of field trips, different parts of the world, and the impact of, uh, on humans, thanks to infected animals. It's not all about infectious diseases, though, that start in uh, sub-Saharan Africa or a place in the undeveloped world. It could be about tablets. And what Gillian Trent do, Tent does is she looks at research that's emerging from Nicholas Negropont, MIT, and Mark, Matt Keller, fellow researcher. They've got research that happened on the back of dropping iPads into Ethiopian villages, two of them, and watching what happens. And they trained adults in the villages and how to recharge the iPads with solar-powered rechargers. But that's it. And they uh, have some interesting findings about remote, illiterate communities and how self-teaching, self-learning occurs with the bring-your-own-device role. Jillian says, aid groups might do better by just giving out mobile phones and laptops with self-teaching games. She also makes some conclusions which suggest maybe Rory Quinn, the Minister for Education, should just put the money into giveaway tablets instead of new schools. I'm sure that won't go down well with the professional teaching um, unions across Ireland. Elsewhere, Mini Mooks. If you follow me on Flickr, you'll know that Ruth and I had an adventure with a mook in Sicily. Portuguese built mook. Not many of them made. I like this. It's the only car perfect for taking the family to the beach and then going to the club in the evening where it stacks up well among Rolls Royces and Ferraris. There's something invigorating about them. If you ever take a mook out on the Audubon or the Autostrada uh, or the motorway in Ireland, wear goggles. I didn't. I wore uh, sunglasses and I got burned. Inside the FT weekend, the tensions mounting about where the Barack Obama will find his voice in the second and third debates. I think he will. Um, gosh, you know he's debating Mitt Romney on the eve on the uh, 20th wedding anniversary of himself and Michelle. I wouldn't have had the mood for it. They're saying maybe altitude sickness also played a role. Plenty of debate notes about James Riley, the Minister of Health in Ireland. Fine Gael is interviewed by Jenny Smith. Basically, 15 conservative Fine Gael lawmakers are going to probably vote against any government proposals to libera liberalize abortion in Ireland. Stay tuned. Or, just write about it. There's a Bodley Head FT essay prize that you can win a thousand sterling from. Have your work published on any particular subject. All the competition is asking for is no more than 3,500 words on any topic. Submit the work by midnight, November 18th. Be between 18 and 35, and you too. You get your book work published in an ebook and get a prize of an audience as well as some money. In Portugal, gra graduates are plowing into farming. It's an article by Peter Wise. Young professionals are turning from stalled urban opportunities to jobs on land. We can erect a polytunnel as well. Sajo, listeners, there ought to be a Sajo segment just about polytunnels. We're going to build one for our back garden, just a small one. 
This is a farmer checking her crop under a vast polytunnel in Amarante, northern Portugal. Young entrepreneurs are lending agriculture a new elan. Yes. And the same thing could happen here in Ireland. Back to the land. Finally, in the money section of the FT, plenty of interesting stuff, especially in the magazines about, you know, the world's turning over to women. Uh, I talked about that last week in my YouTube clip. But this is what I think is interesting. And you can tune me out right now and tune right into a money blog when he interviews uh, Handel Glides. And here's why. Really interesting stuff about Chinese style secrets of clever sourcing is a business challenge with Jonathan Morris talking to Chris Lee and supply issues that he's encountering in taps and, and like the home plumbing section. Labor costs have risen more than 100% in China, so that's, gonna, that's affecting a lot of his uh, channel to market. But he points out some stuff that Paul Manny also got on an interview on his audio booth flow. Basically, research, visit China several times before you make a commitment, and then here's some tick-off things trading with China that I think is really powerful advice. Specs have to be understood by your supplier. Standards have to be met, special EU standards. Get some supplier that actually looks mainstream. Not the brass plate, ex brass plate experts that Paul points out in his, in his audio uh, blog. Check your references, negotiate source contracts, and then plenty of other things about maybe getting better payment rates and um, return schedules sorted out. Finally, don't make any shortcuts, assumptions on shortcuts. That's important. But to conclusion, the right supplier on the other side of the world could be a better support for your business than your local bank. I'm Bernie Goldbach. Looking at support for my back garden on um, this first weekend in October. If you want to catch up with me, do it on Twitter at Top Gold or my Flickr photo stream where I'm also called Top Gold or Irish Eyes. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye for now.